Before I start this video, I just want to say I'm so sorry that I haven't posted in a while. I've been working on this video day and night endlessly to get it done. It's been taking me a very long time and it's been very hard. I've even made up this whole big sheet on it, literally outlined the whole entire video. So, as you guys know, I've made tutorials in the past, and yes, I'm not the best Rocket League in the world, nor am I the most skilled, not a pro, nothing like that. I'm pretty high up there and I have a ton of arrows in it, but I have made tutorial videos in the past, and I went back and looked at them recently, and I realized, you know, the job I did in that was really low class, so I wanted to bring you guys a really high class, kind of master's guide to Rocket League that will not tell you everything, but it will give you enough advice to put you in the right directions to people that have great videos that can help you and also a lot of advice that I have. This video is going to be a little bit long, a little bit lengthy, but stick with me. This is really going to appeal to lower ranks. Don't leave your higher rank. You still are going to learn things. You may learn places to find things, just something that you didn't know. You never know. So for those prospects out there, you know, they may get three checks. Challenger Elite and all those challengers, you know, they may get two checks off this video. Uh, from rising star all the way to superstar, you know you guys may get one, and if I get any of you guys from champion above to learn anything, let me know in the comments because I'd love to know that. Myself as a super champ, and I think this qualifies me a little bit, I have around 15,000 hours in this game, and I have researched tons of videos, went through everything from Kenobi to Sir Timbers to a whole bunch of people that make great tutorial videos, which I will have every video that I've really watched to understand this in the description and so you guys can go check it out for yourself if you don't think I explained it well enough. So I'll have a series of clips and everything over my voice here. So first of all I want to say that I do use keyboard and mouse but this will be specified for keyboard and mouse, Xbox controllers and PlayStation controllers. I have all the key bindings and everything. So with cars, basically my major hit is it is all about how you feel in the car. Every car, yes, has different stats, but if you don't feel right in the car, even though that car has the best stats, it's not the best car for you. They have differences from power slide, hitbox, turn radius, and a couple other things. In the description, I will have down a whole chart of every single car that they've done, and basically their turning radius, their boost turning radius, their hitbox, so you guys can see a little bit for yourself. Because, you know, there are some cars that, even if you feel good in it, I just don't recommend using, like, the backfire and things like that. You know, they're fun to joke around in, but they're just not statistically good enough to really be a good Rocket League player in. My feeling, as well, is that the cars also have a different weight, and there's a lot of other people that think this. It is not said by Asonics, a lot of people don't agree with me with this, but if you don't agree, that's fine. I'm just saying my little piece here. Uh, basically, I feel like something like the Dominus is a little bit more heavy with the than the breakout because when you try to do like an aerial dribble or something or hit the ball most likely the breakout will like spin off to the right while the dominus will stay straight and steady with it just something that I have a feeling about the way but I can be completely wrong it's just maybe my feels in the game so main cars that are basically used by people you know every car could be used by you as long as you like it but I'm just gonna give you guys four cars that a lot of people use and pros use a lot of people use the octane for its nice hitbox it does seem to me to get lighter hits, but it is a very good car, good hitbox, very solid. A lot of people use it, a lot of people love it. Another car, this is a DLC car, it's called the Dominus. Uh, this is a little bit longer and a shorter car than the Octane. Very good as well. I personally love it. It has a lot of good sweet spots to it, and I think the car feels great, but that's personally the car that I use. I actually use all of these, but mainly the Dominus. Uh, then the next one is the Breakout. This car is a little bit smaller than the Dominus. It's the smallest one out of all of them. has a smaller hitbox, but for a lot of people it feels really nice off walls and in aerials. And then the last one is Batmobile, which is another DLC car. This has got a very wide front to it. Very low to the ground, but very wide. It's very good for bro blocking. It has a very big hitbox, just not height-wise. So that's the four suggestions. Two of them are DLC, so... You know, it's up to you if you want to pick them up or not, and if you do, I'd highly recommend using them. Also, I want to say really quickly that toppers, boosts, and everything that you can put on your car don't matter, so go wild, have fun with your car, make it look as cool or as silly as you want it to. So first, we're going to go into camera settings. So in camera settings, the first thing that I recommend you doing is taking camera shake off, because as you can see here, 
the difference between it. Camera shake will shake your screen so it makes it harder after you hit the ball to really see as well. So it just gives you a bit more of an advantage to the game. And then if we go to all the other camera settings like FOV and stuff like that, these are mine, but I personally recommend trying out pros. You could try mine out and you really have to find what's comfortable with you. I would spend a good amount of time in trading and stuff. And you know, it may not feel correct right away, but eventually you will hit that sweet spot and the camera settings are so important. People like to play far, far away from the car. I play kind of close to it and a little bit more angled upwards. So that's my personal and I will put a chart down in the description of uh, all the pros camera settings so you can check them out and try them yourselves. The stiffness really quickly. Some people really don't know what the camera stiffness is and that's basically when you get to supersonic speed that's how far your camera is going to push back or when you turn how much it's going to swivel. The stiffer it is the harder it will stay in your car. In this. Okay next thing is controls. So for keyboard and mouse I keep everything on default controls but for a controller what I really really recommend you try is for the PS4 and PS3 uh, you put power slide and air roll to LB, uh, to L1 I mean, and then for Xbox One and Xbox 360 it'll be LB. And then you could also try out putting boost to X or square. X would be for Xbox and square would be for PS4. So you might want to try that out. I think it's a lot easier to hit jump from having it there. Or you can even try putting boost on X and jump on square. Or for Xbox it would be A and jump on X. It's a little confusing having to do the conversions, I'm sorry about that. Most of the pros though, as I might want to say, use PS4 controllers. Now this is really because they played supersonic acrobatic rocket powered battle cars. Wow, I can't believe I got that right. Um, and back then that was all you can use, it was for PS3. I played it shortly, uh, but when I picked it up everyone was just really good at the game. Also we'll scroll down this list here and I'll show you my controls. Okay, next thing we're going into is video settings. Now with the video settings here, some people may not know what VSync is, so what I'll tell you. Basically, if you boost on, it will get you give you less chance to have screen tearing, and if you don't know what screen tearing is, I'm showing you a clip right now, so you guys can see. It just little tears in the screen, but if you do put VSync on, it does give you a chance of having more of an input delay, so it's really up to you if your computer can handle it or not, and if not, I wouldn't recommend keeping it on. The screen tears sometimes are really not too bad on Market League. But if you're really starting to notice them, that's how you fix them. Next thing is you want to take off motion blur and weather effects. This gives you a pretty big advantage. You can turn off the rain on maps and the blurriness on your car, which makes you be able to see the ball clearer, see downfield clearer. It just gives you a much better advantage at the game, so I would highly recommend taking those off. Unless you like the cinematic view, then for all means you can keep them on. That's just my recommendation. This is another thing in the video settings that are very important. You have to be playing at least 60 FPS. The best thing you could do is be playing at 144 FPS and that gives you such a major advantage over other players. The frames per second is a really key factor. Now I'm sorry on Xbox and PS4 you guys don't really have much of an option here but on PC you know getting yourself a $200 uh, 144 hertz monitor will give you a big advantage in Rocket League and you guys will really be able to see the difference. And then the last thing, the settings, what we have to say is the chat. Go wild with the chat, do whatever you want, it's all keen to your play style. I just like to have the Savage key enabled and that's pretty much it. Sometimes when I'm having a bad night I'll put the OK on, but besides from that, it's really up to you guys what you want to put on. Training is essential to new players. It's also essential to old players, because if you're not doing it, in between games you should be leaving your game and going to training. Whatever you want to work on, if you want to work on aerials, go into all-star aerial training, because you should be able to do it if you're an advanced player. If you just want to work on dribbling and slight other things like that, just go into free play. And free play is just, in my opinion, the best way to go in between games. You could mess around, do whatever you want, wall hitch, dribbling, anything. You could set yourself up, you know, work on centerings, whatever you're not really doing so well that night, you'd be working on in free play in between games. It may just give you that little edge to win the next game, you never know. But for lower players, what you want to try to do is get an 8 or higher on striker and goalie all-star training. And then basically, you want to get a 5 or higher on aerial training. I'm just saying this because aerial is a little harder. You really want to get a 10 on everything would be great and you'll be really ready to go out there and, and 
ranked and see that you'll have such a big advantage of people at that lower ranks. And then also another recommendation that I'd say doing is if you can't do it at all star, try at a pro level, doing the whole pro level backwards. And you know what, try to get it around a 5 on it would be really great and that will just help you with your... So being able to fly backwards would give you more position to get the shots in more of a corner and something sometimes even give you more power on your shots. So the next thing we're talking about is defense. Defense has to be one of the most important things in the game. Without defense, you, you're really hard to win the game unless your offense is incredible, but you really need that defense. Because, you know, if you don't let them score a single goal, how are you going to lose the game? All you need to do is roll one in, and that's it. You know what I mean? And as if you've been outside, done anything, watch movies, every coach that you hear will say defense is the key to victory, and that's true. But a main thing to defense in Rocket League is rotations. If you don't rotate well, it's going to be hard to get back to be playing defense. And also just re rotations on defense. You know, if you are going to clear a ball and you miss that clear, you should be dropping behind your teammate and he should be coming up to do the clear. Vice versa, if your teammate misses, you want to go up to make that clear and he should be dropping behind you just in case, you know, you get challenged with a 50-50 or you miss it yourself. Also, another really important thing is do not ball chase the ball. No one likes a ball chaser. Ball chaser isn't good, even if you're the best player in the game. Ball chasing just won't work. You know, you can be so good unless you're playing people at Prospect and you're a grand champ, which is totally unfair. Ball chasing, you, you need a teammate when there's other teams, where there's other opponents to the game. And that also, with ball chasing, it leaves you out of your rotations, so that makes your defense weaker as well. So another big part to defense is seeing how your opponent plays. Reading your opponents, I would say try to do it in the first 30 seconds of the game and even you can give yourself a minute because reading them could really depend on how you play that whole entire game and play that game of defense. You know, some people are more of a long shots, which you'd have to play a little bit less aggressive then because if you give them the opportunity to get a long shot on and you're up too far, you know you're not going to get it. Then there's dribblers who people just like to take control of the ball and keep the ball close to them and try to dribble the ball on you which it could be very hard to approach, but a good way to keep a dribbler at bay is take the high ground and take the ball from them before they can flick it over you. And then the other thing that is a little bit more advanced players, I would say, to this is the passers. And this can be really advanced or it could be not as advanced. You know, some people you can pass it by taking it up the wall and just passing it over net, which is a little bit easier to stop. And then some people will be right next to each other in front of you and one will pass it to the guy on the right and the guy on the right will shoot. It's a little bit harder to stop. That, which I'd recommend doing, is waiting for their pass. And once they start that pass, try to intercept the pass before it hits the other player. Also, if you can see where that other player is and see where they're shooting, just being able to stick it out and go and be able to hit the ball away if you're in a very good position is another good way to do it. Another thing that I forgot to say for dribbling is if you're there are two people back you want to send one person out to pressure the dribbler and make sure if he makes the dribbler flick the ball then you want to come up right away and while he's in that flick and a little bit disoriented from trying to get it around from your teammate hit it away as well. Another major, major thing about defense is not going for boost instead of the ball. I've seen so many people do this even at the level that I'm at and it's just frustrating and it's really not worth it there are the little boosts on the ground you know try to make your dropping path and just your path in general in Rocket League to go over those little boosts to get yourself to have at least a little bit because I'm saying you can get any save from top to bottom of the goal with 12 boost and 15 would be even better but with that and knowing the proper jumping and boosting you'll be able to get anything by collecting two boost little boost pads you'll be having 24 boosts which gives you plenty of boost to hit the ball and clear it away then on clearing after you made that great save that you just did which there's a couple different ways of clearing it, it depends on the, your opponent's position. So this is where you have to keep kind of aware of what your opponent just did. So, if both are up from trying to do a big play, you know, had a big pass play and you just cleared it away from them and they're both out of position, something that you might want to do is get a big clear or chuck the ball towards the goal. If they're really out of position, that should be an easy goal to roll right in and easy for you guys. But if there's someone in midfield, you might want to try dribbling the ball a little bit. And by doing that, it's just a simple dribble. Or you can take the ball up the wall and hit it off the wall and clear it. But also, the last one is if there's one person up on you and one person in the middle, 
a major thing that you can do is you can try to pass it to your teammate, which is a little bit more of an advanced move and your teammate has to be looking. But if you hit it to him and then you get it past that person that's up on front of you and then he can chuck it past the guy that's in midfield or he can dribble it past the guy in the midfield and then you're breaking through their little midline defense and that means they were kind of overstending themselves a little bit so it should lead up to an easy goal on your part. And then the last thing with clearing is if you're both in goal and this is really communications wise for this you'd really have to be on some sort of voice chat but besides from that if you have two guys in goal and one guy has more boost and the other one has none what you want to do is the person with no boost goes out and pressures and he takes that ball and he will bring it to the left or right corner take that big boost take it off wall and clear it that way and that's a very very effective way of clearing the ball next thing i'd like to talk about is the 1v1 defending so this applies to just ones or if your teammates have been beaten and it's just you and another guy. So there's a couple of ways that people do this. Is the dribbler, which is someone that will keep the ball close to their car. And there's a couple of ways of dribbling, which I'll go over later in the video. And this is, I'll tell you how to do them and I'll tell you what they are. So those are what you want to look out for dribblers in game. And this is someone that really just keeps the ball close to their car and will try to flip it around you when you get close. So these people can be very, very good in it and if they're very well practiced, it can be hard to beat. But a main tip is just take the high ground. If you can be higher on them, most likely they're trying to flick it up. So if you're above the ball already, you'll be able to stop their ball pretty easily. But you can't go too high because if you go too high, sometimes people are well versed enough where they'll keep it low and you'll, they'll go right underneath you. And then from a dribbler, if they're an experienced enough player, you'll get a faker too. This is someone that will, if they get enough 1v1 opportunities on you and has dribbled you and you know you've stopped it a couple times and they've kept on doing the same thing, sometimes they just won't hit the ball and won't flick it. And that's why I said don't go too high because if they do that, then you'll be flying right over the ball and be missing that ball like no. And you're going to fly right over the ball and miss it. And then last but not least, we have the shooter and this is someone that's just going to playly chip the ball. Sometimes it depends on their skill level, they'll chip it in corners and they'll chip it on the top post. But this is generally the simplest one to block. If you're back in goal, you can get up and hit it away, even if it's in the toughest corner. Sometimes these are hard to block, but most of the time you'll be able to get them pretty easily. Guys, I just wanted to say really quickly that I decided to split the video up into two different episodes because I was trying to edit it down to make it into one, but I realized that it was too long, it was about 35 minutes, so I decided to cut it down to two. So we're going to be ending the first one here, the second one should be coming out very shortly. As I said, it takes a lot of editing to get these done, there's a lot of work put into it, but it, I'm trying to push it out as quick as I can, and I hope you guys enjoyed this one, and this really got to, you know, half of the stuff, but some of the more advanced stuff will be coming on in the next one. And we'll have offense, uh, wall riding, aerials, and stuff like that in the next episode. So stay tuned for the next one. It should be coming out very shortly. Leave a like and subscribe. It helps out a lot. And I will see you guys in the next one.